in this problem solving session we are going to solve some problems related to quantum entanglement measure as a first problem let us consider a composite system described by the state k psi uh, which is written as a superposition of k00 and k11 you are asked to find the von neumann entropy of the system and you are asked to show that the subsystem are entangled so let us do that first of all let me uh, work out the density matrix so density matrix would be k psi bra psi and we have done so many problems on density matrices so you can immediately write the density matrix as 2 by 3 k 0 0 bra 0 0 plus root 2 by 3 k k 0 0 bra 1 1 and then you will have terms root 2 by 3 k 1 1 bra 0 0 plus 1 by 3 k 1 1 bra 1 1 and this you can write in a matrix form to write it in a matrix form generally the trick is uh, you arrange the row this way say it is k 0 0 k 0 1 k 1 0 and k 1 1 this uh, method will be helpful for all other purposes as we will see and we know already so uh, the column are also let us say we put it this way k 0 0 k 0 1 k 1 0 k 1 1 then we can write uh, the first element as say 2 by 3 0 0 root 2 by 3 then we'll have 0 0 0 0 and we'll have 0 0 0 0 we we'll have root 2 by 3 0 0 1 by 3 right so so this is the density matrix now to find the eigenvalues of rho let us set up the characteristic equation first to set up the characteristic equation we know how to do that so we just have to find the determinant of this you have to set the determinant to be 0 2 by 3 minus lambda 0 0 root 2 by 3 0 minus lambda 0 0 0 0 minus lambda 0 root 2 by 3 0 0 1 by 3 minus lambda so this determinant is equal to 0 and if you actually open it up it's very straightforward and you will get this equation lambda square into 1 by 3 minus lambda please verify it yourself 2 by 3 minus lambda minus root 2 by 3 is equal to 0 so therefore the eigenvalues therefore eigenvalues of rho r this density matrix would be lambda is equal to 0 0 from here then you'll have one third from here and from the last part you will have lambda is equal to you will get uh, 2 minus root 2 divided by 3 so these are the four eigenvalues you will obtain now uh, you are asked to find out the von neumann entropy of the system so to do the von neumann entropy we know work out the von neumann entropy s rho is equal to minus trace of rho logarithm with base 2 rho and this is equal to minus summation of lambda i lambda i is the eigenvalues i at eigenvalue log 2 lambda i so you will get minus 1 by 3 log 2 1 by 3 plus 
टू माइनस रूट टू बै थ्री लग बेस टू टू माइनस रूट टू बै थ्री इनफेक्ट इफ यू वर्क इट आउट यूजिंग ए कैलकुलेटर यू उल गेट इट टू बी जिरो पॉइंट नाइन एट एट नाउ डू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट नेक्स्ट पार्ट वाज टू यू आर आक्स टू शो दैट इज सब सिस्टेम्स आर एंटेंगल्ड टू डू दैट लेट अस फर्स्ट कैलकुलेट द डेंसिटी मेट्रिक्स ऑफ द सब सिस्टेम ए फॉर एग्जांपल लेट अस एनी सब सिस्टेम यू कैन पिक अप सो लेट अस से लेट अस फाइंड आउट द रिड्यूस डेंसिटी मेट्रिक्स ऑफ ए देन यू हैव टू ट्रेस आउट बी सो density matrix reduce density matrix row a would be if you trace out row then you will be able to get that and in fact uh, it's very we have done problems like this you can immediately get it to be 2 by 3 k0 bra 0 plus 1 by 3 k1 bra 1 and this you can write it in a matrix form in matrix form it would be 2 by 3 0 0 1 by 3 all right so here it's very straight forward now the eigen values eigen values of row a r you have only diagonal elements so it is 2 by 3 and 1 by 3 so to know whether the such systems are entangled or not we just need to find out the reduced von neumann entropy so in this case let us work out s rho a that would be minus trace rho a log to rho a which is nothing but the summation of the eigen values of rho lambda i lambda i is the eigen value of rho a uh, there are two eigen values so base 2 log 2 lambda i and you will get minus 2 by 3 log 2 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3 log base 2 1 by 3 and if you work it out if you put it in a calculator you are going to get 0. Nine one eight. So you see, as the reduced von Neumann entropy is non-zero, this implies that subsystem A is entangled with subsystem B. All right. Now let us work out this problem. Consider a state represented by the density operator rho is equal to p. k uh, psi minus bra psi minus plus one minus p uh, i by four i is the identity matrix where p is the probability so it has to lie between zero and one uh, k psi minus is the bell state uh, which is superposition of uh, which is given as one by root two k zero one minus k one zero applying the ppt uh, that is the positive partial transpose criterion which is also known as perry's horodeki criterion you are asked to find the condition for which the two sub systems will be entangled so let us work it out this is an important problem and very interesting as well so let us work it out so rho is given as uh, p k psi minus bra psi minus plus 1 minus p i by 4 let me work it out systematically first let me work out psi minus k psi minus bra psi minus this would be 1 by root 2 k psi minus is k 0 1 minus k 1 0 and then you have 1 by root 2 bra 0 1 minus bra uh, 1 0 so this will give me 1/2 k 
जीरो वन के जीरो वन ब्रा जीरो वन माइनस के जीरो वन ब्रा वन जीरो माइनस के टू वन जीरो ब्रा जीरो वन प्लस के टू वन जीरो ब्रा वन जीरो राइट सो दिस इज व्हाट आई विल गेट एंड इन फैक्ट आई कैन राइट इट इन द मैट्रिक्स फॉर्म दैट वुड बी वन हाफ जीरो 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 वन माइनस वन जीरो जीरो माइनस वन वन जीरो 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 सो दिस इज वॉट आई हैव नाउ अगेन वी आर हैविंग अनदर टर्म इन द डेंसिटी मेट्रिक्स ऑपरेटर आई बाय फोर आई बाय फोर वुड बी वन बाय फोर आई बाय फोर इज ए फोर बाय फोर आइडेंटिटी मेट्रिक्स सो यूल हैव वन जीरो 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 वन जीरो 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 वन जीरो 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 वन सो नाउ इफ आई कॉम्बाइन दिस उथ दिस वन इफ आई पुट इट हियर देन आई कैन फाइनली राइट रो सो रो उड बी इक्वेल टू द डेंसिटी मेट्रिक्स उड बी इक्वेल टू आई हैव वन माइनस पी बाई फोर जीरो 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 वन प्लस पी बाई फोर माइनस पी बाई टू जीरो जीरो माइनस पी बाई टू वन प्लस पी बाई फोर जीरो एंड लास्ट रोड भी जीरो 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 वन माइनस पी बाई फोर सो दिस इज वॉट आई उल हैव ओके नाउ बिफोर वी प्रोसीड फर्दर आई थिंक इट उल बी यूजफुल टू अंडारस्टैंड हाउ द मेट्रिक्स एलिमेंट रो अफ रो आर रिटर्न इन द बेसिस भेक्टर्स अफ सब सिस्टेम ए एंड सब सिस्टेम बी सो लेट मी एक्सप्लेन डेट केयरफुली यू सी द बेसिस भेक्टर्स let us say basis vectors of a r uh, in the hilbert space of a r say phi a1 and phi a2 get phi a2 and basis vectors vectors of b r get uh, phi b1 and केट फाइव बी टू ओके द बेसिस भेक्टर्स अफ द कम्पोजिट सिस्टेम्स इन दिस मेट्रिक्स इज गोईंग टू बी एडेंट्स इन दिस फॉर्म फाइ इन दिस ऑर्डर लेट एस से इट इज फाइ ए वन बिकज नाउ द दिस इज अ कम्पोजिट सिस्टेम दिस डेन्सिटी मेट्रिक्स रिप्रेजेंट्स ए कम्पोजिट सिस्टेम अफ ए एंड बी and basis vectors uh, this hilbert space composite hilbert space is spanned by the basis vectors of a and b and these basis vectors are going to be arranged in this order phi a1 phi b1 and you will have phi a1 uh, ket phi b2 then you will have phi a2 phi b1 and you'll have phi a2 phi b2 let me explain it a uh, little bit more clearly let me write the density operator a uh, density matrix and it is the similar uh, line i am going to discuss it uh, the way i have done it in the previous problem so let me arrange it in the row row would be in this order phi a1 phi b1 then you have phi a1 phi b2 and you have here phi a2 phi b1 and you have phi a2 phi b2 similarly the column let me write it Uh, this way let me take it little bit 
this side let me put a gap here similarly this one okay and let me the column are also phi a1 phi b1 phi a1 phi b2 phi b1 phi a2 now we have to be careful so phi a2 phi b1 then you have finally phi a2 phi b2 then the density matrix elements would be first element would be let me put the indices 1 1 from here and 1 1 from here from the column so first element would be row 1 1 1 1 this first element belongs to a this first one belongs to a this one belongs to b indices this indice indices belong to a and these indices belong to b okay then you will have uh, in the second term you are going to have row 1 2 1 1 row 2 1 1 1 row 2 2 1 1 okay then the second row would be row 1 1 1 2 uh, row row 1 2 1 2 row 2 1 1 2 row 2 2 1 2 and then third row you will have row 1 1 2 1 you see i hope you are getting it then row 1 2 uh, row row 1 2 2 1 these indices are very critical then you will have uh, you will have here row 2 1 2 1 and row 2 2 2 1 and the finally in the final row you will have row 1 1 2 2 row 1 2 2 2 row 2 1 2 2 and row 2 2 2 2 right uh, so this is how we can write the um, all the matrix element of the density operator now taking transpose over b means uh, interchanging the in indices associated with b so all uh, and keeping indices belonging to a intact so say i have the indices i j k i j k l where i belongs to a j belongs to b and k belongs to a and l belongs to b here i mean to say um, taking you know taking transpose taking transpose over b which means I will keep the indices belonging to A intact and I will interchange the indices belonging to B. So I will have I, L, K, Z. So this is what we will have. For example, in the density operator here, if I have the element is say, density matrix element is say row 1, 2, 2, 1, then taking transpose means I will have row 1, 1. A 2 will go here and 1 will go here right it will be row 1 1 and uh, you will have 2 2 so if you look at the elements here uh, if I look at the matrix here so I have this one and if I want to take the transpose over B this will go this side and this will go this side this would get interchange if i just talk about this one only i hope you get this idea and this is very important now to do that uh, let us see because i have to take the transpose over b uh, of the given density operator i am given the density operator let me write it this is what we have worked out let me write it once again here 1 minus p by 4 i have 0 
zero zero and then i have zero one plus p by four minus p by two zero zero minus p by two one plus p by four zero 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 one minus p by four uh, let me take it to the other piece so let me take it here now okay now let us find out the partial transpose transpose over b if you follow the scheme then you will get this please do that yourself you will get it very easily diagonal elements are going to remain un unaffected it will remain unchanged but here you will see you will have this will now become because of the transpose over b it will become minus p by 2 and you will have elements would be z 0 0 1 plus p by 4 0 0 uh, minus p by 2 0 1 plus p by 4 0 0 0 0 1 minus p by 4 so this is the transposed uh, partially transposed matrix uh, we are having now let us work out the eigenvalues of this matrix rho tb and to do that we have to set up the usual characteristic equation the characteristic equation you can set up easily and if you do that characteristic equation would be lambda minus 1 plus p by 4 whole cube into lambda minus 1 minus 3 p by 4 is equal to 0 so therefore it implies that the eigenvalues would be eigenvalues of rho tb are lambda is equal to it is you see threefold degenerate so you will get 1 plus p by 4 1 plus p by 4 1 plus p by 4 and from the last one you will get 1 minus 3 p by 4 so this is what you will obtain so these are the four eigenvalues out of which three are degenerate and one is non-degenerate the last one now you see p p lies between 0 and 1 right so the first three eigenvalues are first three first three eigenvalues are positive eigenvalues are always positive are always always positive but if you look at the this is the first three one however you if you look at the last one uh, however the last eigenvalue it's very easy to see the last eigenvalue uh, which is 1 minus 3 p by 4 uh, can be negative can be negative if you can easily see if p is greater than 1 by 3 so this is important well, if one of the eigenvalues become negative then we say that rho tb this density uh, this is not density matrix any longer than uh, this matrix will not be semi positive definite will not be will not be semi positive semi positive definite that means one of the eigenvalues are going to be negative if p is greater than 1 by 3 so this implies as per positive partial transpose criterion or ppt criterion what you are going to have is that the state will 
द स्टेट विल नॉट बी सेपरेबल नॉट बी सेपरेबल ओके वॉट डज इट मीन दैट इज इट विल बी द स्टेट विल बी एंटेंगल सो दिस इज द कंडीशन यू आर आस्क टू फाइंड आउट इन दिस पार्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम सो द कंडीशन दैट यू हैव बेसिकली एराइव द रिक्वायर्ड कंडीशन ऑफ इनसेपरेबिलिटी वन पी शुड बी पी के नॉट बी इफ पी इज ग्रेटर देन वन बाय थ्री दैट एंड बिकॉज पी के नॉट बी ग्रेटर देन वन इट हैज टू बी लेस देन वन बट इफ पी इज ग्रेटर देन वन बाय थ्री इफ दिस इज द कंडीशन दिस इज द कंडीशन फॉर दिस इज द कंडीशन फॉर इनसेपरेबिलिटी और एंटेंगलमेंट इनसेपरेबिलिटी Let us now work out this problem. A bipartite system A plus B is represented by this density operator. You are asked to find out the negativity and logarithmic negativity for the subsystem B. As you can see by this density operator, that this is a mixed state, and it's a collection of uh, Bell state phi plus and Bell state psi plus. With probability one by four and three by four, respectively. To do this problem, let me write it in a general form. This density operator, rho is equal to. Let me write it as p phi plus k phi plus bra phi plus and one minus p k psi plus bra psi plus. And here we have p is equal to one by four. Okay, but first let me set up the density matrix for this uh, in this form. And we know that phi plus is equal to one by root two k zero zero plus k one one and psi plus. K psi plus is one by root two, k zero one plus k one zero. Okay, so I can write k phi plus bra phi plus in a matrix form. It would be we already know it. It would be one half one zero zero one zero 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 one zero zero one. On the other hand, psi plus k psi plus bra psi plus that would be equal to one half zero 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 one one zero zero one one zero 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 zero. So using this, I can now write our density operator in this matrix form. Rho would be equal to P by two, zero zero P by two, zero one minus P by two, one minus P by two, zero, zero one minus P by two, one minus P by two. Please uh, verify it yourself. It is very straightforward. P by two, zero zero P by two. Now let us. Take the partial transpose over the subsystem B. So if I follow the same procedure as we have done in the uh, last problem, previous problem, then partial transpose over B, you will get the matrix in this form. You will get P by two, zero zero, one minus P by two, zero, one minus P by two. P by two zero diagonal elements actually would remain as it is zero P by two one minus P by two zero one minus P by two zero zero P by two so this is what you will get, obtain you can set up the characteristic equation for rho T B and solving the characteristic equation. 
you can find out the eigenvalues for rho tv and if you do that you will obtain the eigenvalues of rho tv as one half one half one half into one minus two p and one half two p minus one now here uh, in this problem in this problem we are given p is equal to one by four so therefore the eigenvalues for the given uh, problem would be one half for rho tb here would be one half one half one by four and minus one by four so as you can see that one of the eigenvalues is negative so therefore uh, the assist, uh, the state is uh, basically entangled and rho tb is not semi-positive definite so as per ppt criteria rho is not separable it is inseparable and negativity you can work it out easily negativity for the subsystem b negativity and of rho is equal to sum over modulus of the eigenvalues minus one divided by two and if you do that we have one half plus one half plus one by four modulus we are taking so it would be one by four and the sum of all this minus one divided by two so this is going to give us one by four so you see the negativity is non-zero that also ensures the subsystems are entangled and the logarithmic negativity we can easily work out logarithmic negativity the formula for logarithmic negativity is e n of rho is equal to logarithm of 2 you have to take the trace norm over rho tb so in fact trace norm rho tb is equal to so you have to take the modulus of sum of the modulus of all the eigenvalues of rho and because the eigenvalues already you have we have worked it out if you add all this if you take the modulus then you are going to get 3 by 2 so this implies that the logarithmic negativity would be log 2 3 by 2 so this is the answer uh, that is required as a final problem let us work out this problem you have to prove the Schwartz inequality and using it obtain the Heisenberg uncertainty principle for two observables A and B in the form of variance. We encountered variance uh, in the context of uh, Duan criterion that we have discussed and Heisenberg uncertainty principle actually plays very important role when we discuss about continuous variable entanglement. So let us work it out. First of all, let me consider a state vector let us say k alpha plus lambda k beta where lambda is any complex number and now uh, let us take the scalar product of this uh, vector with itself and if we do that we will get uh, bra alpha plus lambda star beta scalar product with k alpha plus lambda beta and you, you know that the scalar product is always uh, positive it is greater than or equal to zero so we have this inequality now from here uh, let me open it up we'll have k uh, bra alpha the scalar product of alpha with itself then uh, mod lambda square scalar product of beta with itself plus lambda star scalar product of beta and alpha plus lambda into scalar product of alpha and beta and this is greater than or equal to zero let's say this is my equation number one let me take uh, let us set now 
because lambda is a complex number let us say it lambda is equal to it is just a complex number i'm taking say beta alpha uh, scalar product of beta alpha divided by scalar product of beta with itself and then you will have lambda star would be equal to minus alpha beta here beta beta and mod lambda square would be equal to you will get it as mod of alpha beta whole square and beta's scalar product of beta with itself whole square this is what you will get as mod lambda square now let me put all these lambdas lambda lambda star and mod lambda square in this equation one if i do that then i will get scalar product of alpha with itself plus uh, modulus of scalar product of alpha beta whole square divided by beta beta minus uh, modulus of alpha beta it's very easy to do do this it's a simple algebra beta beta and finally i will have modulus of alpha beta mod square beta beta this is greater than equal to zero so uh, this term get cancelled so from here you will immediately get uh, alpha alpha minus modulus of alpha beta whole square divided by beta beta greater than or equal to zero so very trivially you obtain the required inequality alpha alpha beta beta is greater than or equal to modulus of alpha beta scalar product of alpha beta whole square so this is the famous square swartz inequality and this is what is required now let us do the second part and obtain the heisenberg's uncertainty principle for observables a and b uh, let us say we have delta a a is operator here a and b are now operators i am not going to use the operator sign however but please understand that i am now talking about operators let's say delta a is equal to a minus expectation value of a uh, then expectation value of delta a whole square which you can very trivially work out and so that this would be equal to this is the variance actually a square expectation value of a square minus expectation value of a whole square right a square of the expectation value of a similarly uh, delta b expectation value of delta b square this is the variance of b would be uh, expectation value of b square minus average or expectation value of b whole square okay now in the square swartz inequality let me put k alpha is equal to delta a this is an operator operating on some arbitrary k say k uh, k gamma and then k beta is equal to which is the result of the operation of the operator delta beta on the arbitrary k gamma and if i put this in the swartz inequality so if i put these things in this swartz inequality you can very easily so let me write the swartz inequality from here if you use this here then you will obtain very easily this equation expectation value of delta a square and expectation value of delta b square is greater than or equal to modulus of the product of expectation value of the product of delta a delta b then you take the modulus square so this is you are getting from the so called swartz inequality now you see to get the heisenberg uh, uncertainty principle let me write the product of these two operators delta a and delta b delta b in this form i can write it in, in terms of the commutator delta a delta b and the anti commutator 
one half delta A delta B and commutator you know this is the commutator this is delta A delta B minus delta B delta A and this anti commutator is delta A delta B plus delta B delta A now you can you can also show that this commutator delta A delta B is equal to x uh, commutator of the operator A and B so we have the product of delta A delta B is equal to one half a, uh, commutator A B plus one half delta A delta B this is anti commutator now you see this anti commutator is this is anti commutator as I have already explained this anti commutator is Hermitian this is Hermitian and this commutator is anti Hermitian this is anti Hermitian because it is anti Hermitian uh, we know that the expectation value of a Hermitian operator this is Hermitian a Hermitian operator is purely real expectation value is real on the other hand for an anti Hermitian operator expectation value expectation value of anti Hermitian operator is imaginary this is imaginary and this is real for a Hermitian operator it is real so let me write put it here delta a delta b expectation value of the product of delta a delta b is equal to one half expectation value of a b commutator a b plus one half expectation value of anti commutator delta a delta b and here this is as i said this is because it is uh, Hermitian it would be purely real and this is going to be purely imaginary this is going to be purely imaginary so if i take now the modulus of the expectation value of delta a delta b then we'll get one by four Ex, uh, this modulus of expectation value of the commutator a b plus 1 by 4 because i am now taking the modulus i am going to get a positive number positive number here delta a delta b mod whole square right since this last term is a real number positive real number this implies i can now write modulus of the expectation value of delta a delta b whole square is greater than or equal to 1 by 4 modulus of the expectation value of the commutator a b uh, whole square and therefore finally from here finally therefore we can write i have this guy with me so if you from this sorts inequality i have this expression uh, i have worked out worked this quantity out so if i put it in the sorts inequality then i will finally obtain expectation value of delta a square into expectation value of delta b square is greater than or equal to 1 by 4 expectation modulus of the expectation value of a b commutator a b whole square right so this is the so-called uh, heisenberg uncertainty relation uh, written in a general form for any two observable a and b Thank you.